I'm back. Uh, let's just practice some puzzles today. So there's this feature on Lee Chess called Puzzle Streak, and it starts off with easier puzzles and gradually gets more and more difficult. And I want to demonstrate to other streamers and other viewers that this is a perfectly acceptable way to do puzzles on a live stream and not something to be embarrassed about. So, like, if you were to just go to the normal puzzle section, those immediately become very difficult because that remembers your progress. Whereas Puzzle Streak will remember your previous streak and allow you to continue it. But um, the notion with Puzzle Streak here yeah, is that, like, yeah, I start off with easy things, I'm warming up, I can have a conversation with a great audience. And, yeah, eventually I will fail one of these, and it's okay. Go back and try again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that this actually works better than the normal puzzle mode for uh, just live streaming purposes. I'm sure I'm going to fail something and it's going to be embarrassing, but... Uh, I don't know, that's kind of how this goes. So, stuff, 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 look at captures, checks, stuff like that. Um, I mean, this is a check, but it doesn't do anything. So if I take here, a king runs back, I take a knight. If I take here, a king backs run, runs back, I take a knight. Taking a knight what, sounds pretty nice. Let's try that. Here we go. Um, yeah. Here we go. Uh, best move for white. So this is going this way. Normally I'd like to push this, but the rook covers this. Oh. Oh, we haven't seen one of these in a long time. Alright, so rook here covers the square. This pawn, the idea is we're going to push this pawn through. And black's going to take our pawn and take our rook, and we're going to promote this. No. <laughs> Wait, what? Excuse me? How does this work? I've never seen this before. Oh, this is faster. Like, so... Yeah, say we do this. Uh, we promote first, they promote, and we take the rook. Okay. I knew that. It's just testing you. Oh, sorry. I've got the translation bot on from when I do shogi. Uh, so on Lee Chess, I fly the pirate flag. I used to fly the Antarctica flag, so yeah, I'm from Antarctica. Uh, all right, that's interesting. This endgame is winning. <coughs> Pardon me. I would not have expected that to be winning. All right, so we sack twice here and promote this. Check, checkmate. Go up, wait. Um, yeah, save the rook. And then they can't checkmate us here because our rook covers the square, so this rook's actually free. Um, now, where's my mate on the edge? Is this it? I mean, it's gotta be this, because, like, everything else drops a piece. But also, if king h7, how do I actually mate? I don't see it. It has to be knight e7. Because, like, every other move I can make will lose a piece. Oh, I'm sorry. There's rook g1. Rook g1 does not lose a piece. Huh. We're, like, three puzzles in and already I'm stumped. That's pretty great. <laughs> what do you all think about this one? This is embarrassing. I should be able to get puzzle number four.
Like, you saw me knock out the first few in, like, five seconds per puzzle, right? It's just sometimes, like, some of the low-rated puzzles are actually pretty hard. Or just not obvious. Um, I'm gonna quiet my translation bot for a minute. Assuming I can log into the box and quiet it. Hmm. I might not be able to get in. Yeah, Rook G1 looks interesting, because if they play Pawn F6, uh, we move the Knight. Or Knight takes Pawn, rather. But then there's no mate to follow. And stuff with, like, Knight E7, King H7, like, checks. Actually, that will mate. Or probably mates. So, yeah, Rook G1 looks interesting. If I just played Knight E7, King H7 seems to refute everything. So we're going to try Rook G1. No, Rook G1 drops the Rook. So that ain't right. Um, so, can I briefly quiet the translation bot? Um, I seem to remember I had a script to do to silence it. Uh... Anybody remember how to use system D to quiet a process that you have running? I need to just look into having a chat flag to disable it, but okay, 97 was my guess. I thought this is what's going to happen. What troubles me is what happens if they don't take the knight. Like, if the king just goes to h7. I didn't see a next move. That's one of the things I find a little disappointing about these puzzles, is that, like, questions go unanswered. I don't know. I mean, if the object's to win the game and not to produce some understanding, then it's fine, but I'd rather have some understanding of what happened, assuming it's not too hard to understand. Um, it's a free bishop. Okay, and then here, check, check, that check loses my queen. <sighs> interesting. This check and then queen g2 looks interesting, but there's got to be some way they can defend stuff. Well, queen f one's the only check that allows me to continue attacking. I don't know what the next move is. I'd like to threaten this. I'd like to play g5, but g5 doesn't... Oh, g5 and the queen h3 mates. Never mind. That's mate. Alright, um, this wins a queen. And this mates, probably. And this wins a queen. And this wins a bishop. And this one's a queen. Um, this one. What's going on this time? Oh, I can take here and then promote a pawn. And that was a free knight. This one's a queen. Uh, this one's a rook. Um, hmm. So, yeah. This one, it's not so clear where the solution... Oh, well, this is the check that doesn't hang something. So let's do that check first. This check, this check, and now the queen's hanging. Um, this is a, just a free rook. Oh, we're in check, so let's take the checking piece. Uh, this is a free rook? No? Looks very free to me. If we take it, this queen check wins our bishop. But after they win the bishop, we have pawn f3 and queen h3 and queen g2 mate. So, uh, we just need to find... Oh, actually, rook f6 protects the bishop. It's even simpler. And this surrounds the king. And this wins a rook. Oh, no it doesn't. 
Um, still, the rook exchange has to be winning, right? And if I exchange here, I can take the pawn for free. But that's just a pawn. If I check back here, I'm not trapping any of their pieces. Hmm. Okay, did I correctly stop the tran- yeah, okay. Stopped the translation bot, so you're not going to see things in Japanese in the chat. But yeah, I really just need a way to have that sleep, rather than having to go to System D to stop it. Um, okay. I didn't think that winning a pawn would be that decisive here, but apparently that's the solution that was being searched for. Rick d8 mates in two. Uh, this probably mates. It smells like mate. Yep, that's mate. Alright, this mates in two. Uh, this probably mates. Yeah, there we go. This... <laughs> Oops! Yeah, okay, this is check, and then we get a free queen. Welcome. So we got 30 problems solved. Yeah. So the problem with this mode is that, like, there's no continue button after you mess up. <laughs> so there's no insert quarter to continue that you, like, might have in an ar 80s arcade machine. Hey, welcome. So, yeah, it's fun to solve puzzles. But also when I'm doing this mode, I should expect that if I'm a bit casual about it, eventually I'm going to fail one of these, and then have to go through like a dozen of these easier problems before I get a hard one again. I forget which puzzle mode I recommended making some change to. Um, I know a number of people, after Puzzles V2 was released, some people recommended making changes and reintroducing a difficulty setting. Uh, and we just couldn't think of, like, what was the right paradigm for that, right? Because the code is really complicated, and we don't want to add or reintroduce a whole bunch of super complicated code until we're certain how we want this interface to function with it. Um, so... Yeah, I'm wondering, maybe this puzzle streak could use a difficulty uh, setting so I don't have to like wade through a dozen or two dozen of these really easy puzzles first. Um, not that it takes long to do, it's just it seems maybe this discourages people from doing this on stream, I don't know. Um, so if I take the queen, nothing happens. If I threaten mate here, they just play that. Um, yeah, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> How hard is this? This should not be so difficult. If I take the queen, like... Okay, first, in puzzles, you're supposed to identify candidate moves. And the reason you identify candidate moves is because... Sometimes, simply by looking for the list of moves, it becomes obvious what the solution is. So, yeah, candidates, candidate, with the idea of this. Uh, I think we combine these two ideas, and we just win. Candidate one, two, three... Yeah, there's not a whole lot of interesting moves here. This capture loses immediately, but it's still a candidate. It just is one that's super easy to reject. So, yeah, if you skip the phase where you list the candidates, then very frequently you're just going to miss the best move. Because if you didn't think of the candidate, how is how are you ever going to play it? Um, so I, what I see here is this, followed by this, followed by queen c4 hitting this king here. Um... 
Oh, that's funny. This knight's defending this. Still, like, this seems to be the first candidate. This is the other candidate. This might be a candidate. But probably not. So yeah, puzzle solutions tend to be a little obvious. Which is a little discouraging, too. Um... Oh, hang on. If I put my king in front of my pawn, eventually this rook's going to come around and over. If I put the king over here, then the rook's going to check me back and forth quite a bit. But eventually uh, my pawn does promote. Mm. My problem here is if I play king a3, they might do rook c4. And I don't know how to meet rook c4. Because if I do king c3, rook b8. Oh, hang on. Yes, if they had played rook b8, we, this would have been check, and then this promotes with check. So that's the difference here. I think it, we still do this sequence with this check. And they have to take, because otherwise we take their pawn. And yeah, we promote, and they're just one move away from saving the game. Alright, that's a free knight. Um, this, oh, hang on. Gotta take the knight first, and then we get a free queen. Uh, this, this, oh. Alright, I was getting ready for pawn takes and then rook mate, but, um, the king ran away. So we don't have the hook mate, because e8 is twice covered. So we don't have the hook mate. Um, but the next best thing... Wait. Why does that work? What's up with my move? So, I was gonna win a rook here. Why is this one so much better? I actually don't know. Yeah, how does this go? Bishop takes, rook takes, king g7. And then we take the rook. Oh, do I not need to take the bishop first? But also, what happens if I do take the bishop first, right? Rook takes. Oh, they have a pawn on the brink of promotion. So that's some reason this doesn't work. Because my rook can't stop this promotion. Which I'm sure everyone saw here, except me. That's okay. Um, yeah, puzzles can be kind of evil like that sometimes. So what I'm looking at is stuff like this. If I check... Oh, wait. If I check, they can't block with the rook. So I should just check directly and take the bishop. Alright, let me check directly and win this. Check. Oh, hang on. If they move the king, I was just going to put the queen here and lose the game on the spot. Instead, they obliged and helped me out. So that's pretty funny. Alright, we have to take this. We can't just leave our queen hanging. Apparently that was fine. Here we just win a rook. Actually, that's mate. Here's a common checkmate theme where you sack the queen. Expect to see that in like half of your puzzles. Okay, this one didn't require queen sack. This one does require the same queen sack on f8. Oh, we, here we don't have a queen sack on f8 because there's no queen sacrifice. Here I'm trying to figure out how we sacrifice the queen to mate. But instead we just check and check and win. Um, here I still can't find a queen sack. Um, but yeah, there tend to be a lot of queen sacrifices in these lower level problems. Um, so there it is, another queen sack. You'll find this also in the Laszlo Polgar book. They have like patterns for checkmates on f6, checkmates through f7, checkmates through f8, on g7, and g6, and g8. Like, um, the psychologist, their father, Oslo, put together this set of 
5,200 something problems. The, um, they're all fairly challenging after you get past the mate and one problems. Um, and yeah, it's just amazing how many of these problems that are sorted by the target square. Like, you can learn a lot of useful combinations that were played in expert and master games just by reading the book. Um, so this idea of sacking a queen is something that routinely shows up uh, in those combinations, along with other various sacrifices. So here, here, the king runs away. Okay, candidate moves. One, two, three. Everything else loses. R rook takes rook, even though it's a candidate, loses. Oh, I'm sorry, knight of six might hold, but we lose the rook over here, so there's no future. If, like, somehow we could play knight d6, we could maybe consider that, except rook takes rook would still crush. Well, I'm sorry, they... Queen takes rook, followed by rook takes rook would still crush it. There might be other ways to defeat knight d6 as well. But, um, yeah, knight d6 is not legal. Um, knight d2 looks like the obvious play here. And we've got, like, rook f3, king up... Oh, rook here, next. And then king h1, rook h3 mate. That's beautiful. I've not seen this before. Um, Bishop d4 sets up a double check threat that looks crushing. Um, the first thing I looked at was this check, and I saw the king running away, and that's useless. Uh, but if we invert the move order, then if king f1, we just take a rook. Here, we take here, and then check, and win the queen. Some... Often in combinations, inverting the move order can yield a better result. Just to make sure to look at things both ways. Um, yeah, so we could take on h7, and then queen h3 mates. Yeah, I guess my problem with these puzzles is that there's usually not very many candidate moves. So, like, once you find the key idea, um, there's not a whole lot to calculate. And as I say that, I get this puzzle. I'm like, hey, why don't I check here? This check actually doesn't do anything useful. It forces bishop f8. But that's not useful. Um, like, rook d8 looks obvious, but it doesn't actually seem to do anything. So, yeah, this is a strange position. I mean, I guess rook d8 prevents this bishop from immediately moving, but, and I don't see anything better than it. Like, king f1's an alternative. Um, I don't think bishop e3, I've listed it now, we can evaluate it now that I've listed it. Uh, bishop e3, bishop f8 doesn't do anything. Well, I'm sorry, bishop e3. If they were to take the bishop with the bishop, um, then we would have mate. If they retreat back to f8, we play rook d8. But if they play bishop e7, our rook has nowhere to go. Um, we can't trap their rook mid-board or anything like that. So yeah, the best-looking move is rook d8. I don't see how it does anything. And I would follow it by playing bishop e3, which also doesn't do... Although bishop e3 threatens bishop c5 winning this bishop on f8. But um, they just play pawn b6 to rebut this. But then we play bishop f3 and bishop takes c6, and then this bishop cannot protect the rook without something hanging. This is vicious. This is this is really something. Yeah. Yeah, this bishop's a target, 
what I've been considering those like pawn b6 and bishop b7 is very quickly coming here. But it's one move too slow because we have this counter shot along the diagonal, which there is no adequate defense to. Um, so let me just try to draw it out here. This check, they block. Bishop e3, pawn b6, bishop f3. So the threat is to take on c6, but they could play rook e6 covering the c6 pawn. Um, at which point we switch to playing bishop g4, which attacks the bishop at the rear. So that's the trick here. All forced. Every move of this is forced. So, yeah, it just declares success immediately, like, oh yeah, you saw all that, right? That's, I don't find that part about puzzle solving encouraging, where it's like, hey, we're going to give you full credit, even though, like, we're not sure if you found the rest of the combination. I find that a bit disturbing, honestly. And the reason it is that way is because we can't have any positions where there might be more than one best move. God forbid that ever happen. How would we ever handle a position where a per player plays the second best move instead of the first best move? So yeah, some of these solutions get cut off really early. And then the puzzle gets thrown out because, oh, well, clearly it's just a bad puzzle. And like, well, we could learn something else from this instead of just calling it a bad puzzle, but okay. That would require extra coding. Alright, so they are threatening this mate, so we have to take the knight instead of taking the rook. Here we take the knight, so we're threatening both the queen and the bishop. They take our queen, we take the bishop, now we take the queen. So... Here we take the knight. Here taking the rook is obvious and promoting this is obvious. Uh, here we pray that their bishop can't stop our pawn. Uh, here bring out our rook and pray for a checkmate. Um, oh, my rating is, on Chessmaster 9000, or I'm sorry, Chessmaster 10th edition, I put in a rating of 9999. And then I played Stanley the Chimp, and I may, went out of my way to lose the game against Stanley the Chimp. And then, like, Chess Master is like, oh, your rating's actually zero, not 9999. So, yeah, I guess it depends who you ask. But, yeah, if you look at my profile on this website, you can see my Lee Chess rating, um, my U.S. Chess Federation rating and my International Chess Federation rating. So, I'm kind of okay at chess. I've won hundreds of tournament games, and um, played in local events, so... Yeah, I wasn't going to be bothered to solve all this. What bothered me here is that this wasn't mate, but this is mate, queen f1. Um... So, yeah, somehow the puzzle just knows when I know something and then throws out my solution when I miss something obvious. And I mean, as it should, it shouldn't... Wait. Excuse me? Oh, there's checkmate here. Oops. All right, whatever. It shows me for trying to have a conversation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's push here, push this pawn, and pray. Oh, uh, candidate, there's no way to defend this, so we just push, push. Oh, taking a rook doesn't win, because the bishop can block an f1. I was going to take a rook, but that would have actually failed the puzzle. So, yeah. You sometimes have to play the best move instead of the fun move. Oh, I missed this interposing piece. Still solve the puzzle. Yeah. 
But I tend to be a little bit careless in these first few puzzles because I expect them to be super easy. So I don't put a lot of effort into them. It'd be nice if I could just skip past the first dozen or two dozen of these with an option, but um, really I should just do, pre develop my own product instead of asking Lee Chess to pre develop such a thing. Because um, who knows if my use case makes sense for other folks. Uh, is that mates, right? Yeah, that's mate. Go over here, get a queen. Uh, we take a knight. Over here, there's not a mate? How's there not a mate? Where's my mate? Is this mate? Probably. Okay, we get a bishop. Alright, here we get a rook. Probably. That looks like a rook to me. Yeah, alright. Here we get a rook. Or I just take the queen, you know. Alright, whatever. I'll try this maybe one or two more times. I seem not to be paying very much attention. Um, Alright. Uh, let's try here. Queen takes mate in one, right? Yeah. Okay, let's protect our rook. And take one of these. Um... Oh, so we're up a rook, so we just trade queens. So now what? If we take here, we've pinned our bishop, which is fine because they can't bring their other rook into the attack immediately. And since we're also threatening the b2 with our rook. So we just trade off some pieces and win the endgame. Uh, this one's a rook. Um, this, I guess we want to go attack the rook and probably checkmate them while they try to go after our king. And they defend their king and we just take a rook, unless we have better. It is a bit concerning that if I take here, this is check. There's probably some perpetual check there somewhere. In a real game, I would be tempted to just like play queen b7, and then exchange queen and rook, and then take this rook and try to win the two bishops uh, versus bishop and knight endgame. That's one option, but there's since this is a puzzle, there must be something better. Um, so another possibility might be bishop b5, queen moves somewhere. I don't know. That doesn't seem to cut it. Um, maybe taking the rook is the right move. Let's check king g1. There's no next check, and their king is in a lot of danger. Yeah, so somehow that works. Don't ask me how. All right, free queen, free rook. I don't know. There's really ought to be some other way to rank this. Like, if you were to give these problems to Maya 1 through Maya 9, some of these Maya 1 would pass, and um, some of these, like, maybe Maya 5 would fail. And Maya attempts to emulate human uh, moves. So it doesn't seek to play the best move in the position, it seeks to play what a player at a certain rating might be might have played in the same position. So really that should be the gauge by which puzzle ratings are decided. It's like human skill. Um, or rather, the reason I say that sort of thing is because like, Yes, these puzzles are based on actual human solvers, but, or sorry, the ratings on the puzzles are decided by wins and losses. But we always cut short the main variation. So that really brings all the ratings into question. Um, geez, like I see this, I see this. Do I have other candidates? 
I mean, I've been looking at this, but that just drops a rook. So that's out. Um, this drops the bishop, but that doesn't seem so important here. Where in the world is my candidate move? And the knight c2, king takes, rook takes. Oh, that's actually checkmate. Never mind. I only looked at the first move. I didn't look any deeper. Or rather, I looked at rook b2, and I didn't continue looking. It didn't occur to me that rook b2 is actually mate. Um, so this mates, right? Yep. Uh, rook takes here, wins a knight, because this pin, this wins a knight. Alright, this does not win a knight, because there is no knight. Welcome. So this is like mate and two. There we go. Um, oh, interesting. <laughs> I was going to do rook e3. And hope that there is some checkmate after that. And then right before I played that, I'm like, wait, list the candidate moves. So we got some candidate moves here. Turns out we have two different checkmate and ones, so let's just play one of them. Alright, this wins the queen, so that's probably best. Oh, we also win on knight. That's kind of cool. I was wondering at the beginning of that puzzle, we didn't have very many pieces, so we'd need something really strong to win. But yeah, winning the queen and then winning the knight is pretty strong. Uh, they have mate in one threat, so we need to defend against that somehow. Or we need to check mate white. But I don't see a mate. The only way I see to defend that uh, is either by pushing this pawn up or by trying to defend along the rank, which seems questionable due to this. Um, yeah, this is a bizarre position, because black is still down material. How does this work? I mean, I did briefly consider queen a1. Queen a1, king e2. Wait. Does this actually mate? That's nuts. Right. So yeah, if king d3, queen d4 is checkmate. There's also a book by the name of like 1001 something checkmates. I forget the full name of the book. But it contains a whole bunch of puzzles just like that, where the king ends up getting mated in all bizarre fashions. Stuff you'll never see outside of, like, serious, serious tournament play. Looking at the variations that both players looked at, but never actually appeared in the game. Because both players saw the combination, so it never actually showed up most of the time. Um... So, yeah, queen f8 does not checkmate here, but it does win the rook on a8. So this is check, this is check, this is check, this wins the rook. Okay, it needed me to actually take the rook there. You'd think most players would probably see knight takes rook. It forced me to play that. There's some lines where... The puzzle won't require you to play the full solution. But yeah, gosh, in some positions, man, it it really wants you to ensure that you see, hey, you can take the very large piece, the queen, the rook, the whatever it is that's hanging. And taking that is clearly the best move. Sometimes it's the only move. Yeah, I stopped listing candidate moves and just started playing at impulse here. Which is one way to try to solve puzzles, but you don't get very far doing that. Okay, winning the rook is enough to mate here, because this pawn protects that one. So if black ever takes this pawn, this one just races forward. 
So we just take the rook and at our leisure promote our remaining pawns. Uh, it's a good end game to know. Um, all right, this has got to be mate, right? Oh. Oh, the king escapes this way. All right. So yeah, I have to check this way instead. So I'm probably the only person who ever fails that puzzle. But hey, since we failed it so quickly, I think we get the same puzzle again. Um, sometimes if you like fail the first couple puzzles very quickly, you will get served the same exact puzzle that you just failed. And it's easier the second time around, because you know what the solution is. Um, so, that's some angle shooting for you. Um, yeah. So, this is pinned. That's kind of an issue. That's checkmate. Alright, this pins the queen, and wins the queen. This wins the rook. Yeah. Oh, hang on. We solved it too good. It took Leech us a minute there to figure out what puzzle to give us next because we solved it too fast. Um, because we're doing too good at this. We are too good at mediocre puzzles. All right, that's right. Yeah, I'd just like to imagine that Lee Chess is trying to predict how long it's going to take you to solve a puzzle. And then, if you solve it too quickly, it just couldn't figure out which one to give you next. It's like surprised that you actually solved it. Um, I'd like to imagine it that way. The reality is it's probably some technical mumbo-jumbo about just like some database index cursor thing. Um, just not selecting it fast enough off of the disk. But I like my imagined perception of things better. So they're threatening this checkmate here. So we can't just take the bishop. That's like the way to fail this puzzle is just take the bishop. Probably bishop f1 is the right move. What? Oh, okay, we can win a queen. My bishop f1 looked fine, but I just... I guess after queen b4, we take a bishop, and it's even. Hmm. So that's what happens when you play too quickly and don't list all the candidate moves. Candidate moves normally include all captures and all checks, not just the most appetizing looking captures and the most appetizing looking checks, but all of them. Because sometimes you will miss a check like bishop h7 that just like wins instantly because it wins, but you didn't even consider it. And if you've traveled like multiple hours via road to go to a real life tournament and you lose a game at said tournament, because you didn't think about what your legal move options were. That's a little discouraging, isn't it? And it's a good reminder to consider all the legal moves. Um, because, yeah, you're not forced to play like checkers where captures or recaptures are mandatory. You can choose to, what moves you want to play. Um, yeah, so my rook covers g6 there. That's what had me tripped up for a second. But yeah, if you go to enough tournaments and lose enough games due to just not considering one move, and then after the game, you hear a number of players say, oh, I just didn't think about that one move. It's not just the one move. It's not some temporary blindness. It's a lack of discipline. It really is. So, you can hear players saying how unlucky they are or whatever, and maybe that is a thing sometimes, but if it happens like every game, there's a common factor, and <laughs> it's not the game. Uh, okay, that's cute. Yeah, I didn't consider this, so this is what happens when I try to lecture, but also I'm trying to have fun. 
Uh, I guess this is fun, even with me failing puzzles. Um, one thing I miss that other chess servers had is this mini game called Guess the Move, where you try to predict what the player is going to do next. And you get points awarded in some sort of chat channel, not based on playing the best move, but on guessing what the player is going to do. So, um, you can frequently guess things that would be absolutely ridiculous moves, but if it's what the player actually does, you get the points. And do the points count for anything? No, it's just for fun. But it's a really fun mini game. And especially as the time starts to run low in a game, you can see um, a lot of really crazy moves get played in time pressure. And it sometimes gets easier or harder to predict time pressure moves. So it kind of raises the stakes on the game. Um, I've been mentioning this... Uh, I don't know, to other Lee Chess and other players for years now. And the infrastructure that have to be developed to support it seems not to be worth implementing it on Lee Chess. But um, it's true that I am starting to look at other open source projects, one of which is Lee Words. And, you know, maybe for Lee Words, I could implement such a thing, because it takes players longer to make a move on Lee Words than it does in Lee Chess. In the Word game, in the OMG Words, it can take minutes at a time for players to come up with a reasonable move. And frequently, like, spectators will try to comment on, like, okay, they might try this, they might try that, sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe a, that sort of mini game would be a better fit for Lee Words than would be for Lee Chess anyway. Um, but it's still a fun game, regardless of where it gets played. Um, so, I don't know if that would also make, be kind of fun in this puzzle mode, to be able to guess, like, which thing am I about to try. Because my guesses, my moves tend to become somewhat random here. Um, it's not easy to predict what it is that I'm going to play. Both in puzzles and in actual gameplay, I, my moves are somewhat random. So I'm not sure if there's any merit to it, actually. But yeah, in OMG words, there's a lot to consider. There's a lot of fun possibilities. And sometimes the player will completely surprise everyone and play some play that nobody had considered. And those minutes are quite fun, too. Alright, so we win a queen this way. And then here... Okay, I was half expecting this block, but then knight check. Um, here, for some reason, I was thinking queen f6, but no, this is just a free knight. Um... Candidate moves, checks, etc. I don't know. A rookie seven threatens mate here. This is the only way to stop this mate while also stopping queen f6. Let me just take the queen. Um, yeah, so... Hmm. This is kind of an issue, isn't it? This is kind of an issue. Oh, but hey, look, free rook. Free queen. Alright, uh, I tried to play this and then realized that's not a legal move. Because there's a knight in the way. Hmm. But yeah, that motivates our actual move, which is get the knight out of the way. Oh, come on. Really? I guess knight e4... How do you even refute knight e4? I guess queen e2 or queen e3 or something. And the counterattack is actually decently strong. What was wrong with my move? What was the counter to this fun play? Rook e1. The only counter play that actually doesn't get mated. 
And then I was thinking, well, okay, the knight's pinned, but I can still take here, and I'm still threatening stuff. But no, the rook moves off the back rank, and after this king retreats, after the queen runs away, then this does not actually checkmate. <laughs> because they've run away successfully. And even with both bishops and the queen pursuing this, there's just no mate. And now we lose the bishop and get mated in two. So I'm sure you all saw that too. Yeah, Puzzle Streak is fun for... Um, I used to do it a bit... Um, uh, not on stream, but in other... I think this is perhaps the best streaming format for puzzle solving. Even though it leads to some embarrassing overlooked combinations, but yeah. Um, as for other formats for just normal puzzle solving, um, or rather Puzzle Storm, etc., those could be fun games to... Um, yeah, I don't know. I see some live streamers try to like run up this count of this streak as high as they can on a live stream. And so they'll spend minutes to hours coming up with moves and get super attached to a run. And I'm not sure if that's healthy or not. Um, I think it's more fun to just like wing it and see how far you get. Um, but I guess you have to have some level of skill to do this too. Anyway, yeah, let's make this the final run. Um, and as I say that, I re immediately regret saying it, because uh, now I'm going to put in a little bit more effort to try to solve these correctly, so we don't end the live stream immediately. But, yeah. Um, all things come to an end somewhere. Or all good things have an end. Um... So, yeah. Hope we all enjoyed this. And feel free to give it a try on your own live stream. Um, don't get too embarrassed if and when you fail a problem. It's natural to make mistakes. This is what makes us human. So, uh, yeah, this puzzle looks hard. I guess we're winning this endgame? Yep. Oh, we're up a rook. Duh. Alright, now we're up a queen. Now we're up a queen. Now... I don't know. Oh, we're up a bishop. Here, this would be mate, except we get mated. So it's important to look at all candidate moves. Here, pawn c4 seems pretty decisive. Be nice to play bishop g5 if that were illegal. Actually, we saw the same puzzle earlier, but just without the pawn c4 move thrown in. This is the same exact puzzle we saw earlier. That's funny. Okay, force the bit, or distract the defender. Um, trapped queen. Uh, so, yeah, this wins the trapped queen. Um, hmm. We want to distract this defender. Alright. Oh, that's like mate somehow. If we play this, if they go forward, we play this and take the bishop. If they go to the side, we just take the bishop. So, yeah, this is the target. Seen Puzzle Storm on stream, and it's unwatchable piece just flying around. I can imagine. I can certainly see that. Yeah, Puzzle Storm is pretty chaotic. Maybe I should try one run of it, despite whatever I'm saying about it. So I've got Zen Mode activated, so I have actually no way to return to the Lee Chess lobby other than disabling Zen Mode. Or opening up a new tab. So we're going to disable Zen Mode. But now, when I go play the next game, I don't have Zen Mode enabled, so...
Uh, I should report some of these issues in proper channels. My mistake. But, um, yeah, we'll give Puzzle Storm a try. Sure. Move to start. Yeah. I think this could be maybe more fun. Some of these racing kind of modes, if there's more than one or just this one. I mean, I, I get a little bit of motion sickness from the way the transition happens between the boards, like between puzzles. Um, it's slightly jarring, and I'm not sure why. Um, but it'd be fun to do this with Smart Move. Um, but I should probably just look for a client side solution, like Lucas Chess or something. Okay, that was not best for some... Yeah, like, I'm not really trying, because there's a timer. So I'm more focused on playing a move quickly than actually trying to solve the puzzle. So, yeah. This is some strange hodgepodge of puzzles with a timer that, for some reason, on some other chess website seems to be all the rage. But uh, I have seen a suggestion of having some different timer modes. and I don't quite get it. Like, is it too difficult for a person to, like, use Google and just set up a timer that way? Or maybe have an egg timer or something. I don't know. Or just, like, toss some food on the stove or in the oven or whatever. And say, hey, we've got this pressure to get these puzzles solved quickly. I don't know. I don't know what's so enticing about having the timer on the website itself, but I guess for some people uh, it's convenient. And they might think it's fun. Wait, that's not mate. This is mate. Alright, take here, take here. Uh, I have no idea. Alright, it's probably that one. All right, we failed another puzzle. Gosh, I wonder if I should take the queen. Who knew? Taking queens can be useful. No idea. New monthly high score! Woo! All right, let's try the other mode. Puzzle racer. Public race. Here we go. Just need to okay. Five, this time we're playing four, the white pieces in all three, puzzles. Two, one, zero. Room, room, room. All right, the race has begun. Yeah, I kind of like the starting point for these. For some reason, in Puzzle Streak, the starting point's a bit easier. For these, the starting point seems a little more challenging. Or more interesting. Okay, I failed a puzzle. Oh, I'm in check. Again, I'm not paying the most attention here, am I? Um, but, yeah. So, somehow having the pressure of whatever this is um, does make it exciting, but also very stressful. And in such a stress laden environment. It's hard to learn too much. Um, so yeah, just the base puzzle mode is one of the better modes. Um, it's just that some of the puzzles cut off too early or too late for people's liking, uh, which actually kind of breaks the puzzle rating system too. But yeah, i uh, glad at least people seem to enjoy this. I don't quite get it. Um, Alright, we got first place out of five. There's all our cars. I don't know how visible that is. Uh, yeah, you can see it. We took first place by a margin of ten. And if you do well the first race, sometimes the next race you get paired with harder opponents. It, I think it just depends who's available, what hour you're playing at. So that's another mode. Then there's the normal base puzzle mode where now we're playing against... Well, my rating's 2486. So even though I don't know the puzzle's rating, I'm guessing it's somewhere over 2400. So like, check, check, mate. 
That seems to be the solution. Okay, check, king up, check, king over. Um, it's not going to be that mate then. King f3, oh, rook a3, king e4, rook e2 mate. Yeah, so this mates. And you have to play this check instead of h5. Actually, maybe you could play h5. No, then the king runs out to e5 and there's no mate. Or, I don't know. It's hard to visualize. But, yeah, that's a simple, straightforward mate. Puzzles rating. Okay, well, I was saying over 2400. I was mistaken. This one is rated 2399. Uh, but, yeah, these normal puzzles are a bit harder. So you just immediately get tossed into the fray of very hard stuff. And it's not so easy to focus on these while you're also trying to do a live stream. But sometimes you get lucky. We just crossed 2500, so yay us. Wait. <laughs> this one's rated 2500? Really? Really? I mean, yes, I was sorely tempted to take here. These were the two candidate moves I found. Um, well, that's funny. We found a puzzle which tends to trick most of the puzzle solvers. But this one's not that hard. It really isn't. You just take the rook, then take the knight. But many solvers get psyched out and take the knight first. And for some reason, taking the knight first doesn't win. Who knows? It's hard to say why. But, yeah. Anyway, that now we're in a 15, or the 2500 puzzle rating. So, you can actually see our puzzle dashboard and see if we've learned anything. Here's the little radar graph that shows that, like, I have a lot to learn about Rook Endgames or something like that. Um, we see that I've solved 54% on average. Uh, I think most people have a better rate than 54%. I think, I don't know, I'm curious. 54% means, like, you're kind of winging it, I think. If you have a solve rate below 50%, I don't know how you do that, but it means that you're struggling a lot. And if you have a solve rate that's like way over 50%, then it means you're trying very hard and spending a lot of time on every puzzle, I think. I don't know. That's my guess. Could be completely off base because the higher your rating gets, the harder the puzzles become. But I think 54% is probably below average. Because, like, sometimes during lunch or a snack break or whatever, I'll be solving these puzzles and spend, like, anywhere between, like, five seconds and a couple minutes on a puzzle. And we can look at the 59 I failed and replay some of them if we wanted to. If we wanted to. Um, it's funny, as I reinvestigate the same puzzle I failed, I don't remember this one. Oh, we can actually turn on Zen mode. So yeah, that's pretty cool too. Uh, so if I were to take the bishop, they take the rook and we lose. If I do queen d4 check, hopefully we win somehow. But yeah, anything other than queen d4 seems to fail immediately because they are up a rook for a knight regardless of our pawn situation. So, yeah, we have to check here. And again, if we liquidate all the pieces, we just lose. So, we have to find another check. So, queen e4, bishop d3, bishop takes, queen takes, gets nowhere. Um, yeah, I don't remember how we solved this one. It's got to be queen e4, but then bishop d3 looks convincing. 
I guess there's queen g2 afterward. I don't know. But yeah, all our other queen checks lose the queen, so because we have no other checks, we have to resort to this check, which also fails. What if we take this? Oh, the king interposes. Why not rook takes? Because then they would just drop the bishop. All right, so yeah, then this endgame with bishop b5 is actually winning. So this is one of the problems we failed. This is one of 59. And we could just... I don't know if this takes me to the next one that I failed, or if this is... Yeah, replaying mixed puzzles. This takes me back. So I failed this one too. Again, I don't remember what the answer is. So... Um, yeah, these puzzles aren't easy. That's why I failed them. Yeah. So it's been about a week since I've seen some of these puzzles. Maybe I try a couple more, but I just can't remember these. They're too hard to remember. You're not supposed to memorize the puzzles anyway, but... Uh, spaced repet or this ability to remember the puzzles seems to be the only way that you can actually solve some of these because they're actually pretty hard. Um, so this one, this is a really good endgame, but it's also challenging, which is why it's rated twenty five ten. Like this whole situation, um, so. Uh, I don't know if defensive move necessarily applies here. I don't know if quiet move makes any sense. Like, how is this a quiet move? We take the rook. That's not quiet. Uh, quiet move definitely doesn't apply here. Rook endgame, sure. Because this does start with rooks. Sixvang, of course. Yes, absolutely. Defensive move, I don't know. I don't see us defending anything, really. So. Um, let's see. Can I get this pawn somehow? I think when I failed this one, the problem was that I did not target this pawn. Whereas if I'd just gone here. Okay. Right. I failed this the same way last time, too. But what was the issue with this move? This is the same way that I failed the problem a week ago. And I still don't understand this. So yeah, maybe like a the chess master recommends. Queen to f8. Queen to f8 forks your opponent's rook and bishop. But sets forth this combination. Uh, which is winning for the following reasons. Like, I don't know, Chess Master did that kind of entertainingly. So, I wonder if puzzles could use something like this, where it just explains the main line, and maybe people could annotate and add in other explanations for things that aren't the main line. I don't know. So, yeah, we're threatening the... Wait, why does this not win? This threatens bishop takes bishop, as well as rook h8. Both of which look very crushing. How in the hell could this not be king d1? No. No, I'm playing king d1. It's got to be king d1. You're wrong. It has to be. If I just keep playing this, eventually it'll give in and let me play it, right? Alright. It's king f1. King f1's even better. Uh, it's not king e1. Why not? e1 looks fine. Oh, king e1, they take the bishop with check. So this is... Okay. There must be a pretty good puzzle because I failed it. I still don't get it. So, hey, this is one of that we failed that 
At least now we played one correct move. Um, two correct moves. All right, we're two for two. Three correct moves? No. 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 No idea. <laughs> oh, there it is. All right. These are hard. This is why I failed them. They're all like 2,500 plus. That's pretty funny. Where's the pin thing? This has a theme of pin. So you can actually add themes to these puzzles too. Does this have a... Th they say advanced pawn? Yes, that makes sense. Clearance. Clearance? Yeah, because we're making way for the rook. I could see that. I wouldn't necessarily call this clearance, but sure. It is. It's just not the first thing that had come to mind. Anyway, uh, yeah. this is, These are the puzzles. Uh, the various ways you can explore them. Um, so beyond this dashboard here, we can see my improvement areas. So we see that out of four puzzles I attempted that involved clearance, I failed three of them. Out of 13 that involved a rook end game, I failed nine of them. So numbers don't lie. The tags might not necessarily be perfect, but the numbers don't lie. Things were better at. Hey, we solved the pin problems that we previously failed, which aren't that numerous anyway. So I'm like super good at pinning, apparently. Um, and other stuff. It'd be interesting to like create a chess personality based on, hey, you're good at pins and deflections, but you're bad at endgames or something like that. And therefore, your chess personality is... I don't know. Um, so here's my puzzle history of 9 minutes ago, 16 hours ago, and so forth. There's puzzles for my games. Alright. I wonder how many of these I played the blunder and it found the better move. Alright, so after King here... Are these from my games from my... No, okay. So this is white to play and exploit my blunder. Which is just mate. No, it's not. What? Excuse me? Where's the mate? Alright. I guess that's not so obvious. Yeah. Alright, so I could see how that was missed. So these, I think, are in order of decreasing rating. Here's one. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the puzzle rating is 807. So this is one where either myself or my opponent... Oh, uh-oh. So yeah, my FIDE master opponent... I don't know if they actually saw this in the game, but there's this check weighing the bishop. How did the game actually proceed? I don't know, but... Ah, this puzzle's rated 807, and yet it's between us playing a 5-2 Blitz game. Maybe this was in a simul or something. I, when What was the occasion where this got played? Wait, was this just straight up a normal... Okay, no, they found it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's one of my more embarrassing blunders, because, like, everybody can solve this except me. Well, thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, yeah, so these are all exploiting blunders that I made, apparently. I don't know if there's any of these where I'm actually the one playing the solving move. Like, yeah, this is one I lost also. Are there any of these puzzles where I'm the player who won the game? I don't think so. I don't think that's how these are classified. You know, though... Oh, here's one I won. Yeah. Or at least I hope I won it. I don't think I found this during the actual game. Because this does look vaguely familiar. 
Yeah, during the actual game, I don't think I played Queen H5. Um, so, yeah, they took here. Oh, I did play Queen H5. Okay. This is a year ago. I didn't remember it, but yeah. We defight, we won our game against I Love Brownies. So, yeah, maybe it could be fun. I don't know. If uh, somehow... Like, I saw there was some social media the other day about a person who was really proud that they played a brilliant move. And that this other chess website uh, let them know that they played a brilliant move. I wonder if it could be fun to say, hey, my game got chronicled in this puzzle collection because I played a good move. Or because I missed a good move or something like that. Like, only 18 out of my many Blitz Rapid classical games, I've played like thousands of games, only 18 of them have made it into puzzles. So maybe this is some sort of achievement-worthy thing where a player might actually want to search this routinely or have some collection of my best moves ranked by puzzle rating. That could be fun. Um, oh, how did we get to the page? So we got here through puzzles, puzzle dashboard, and then this, I think, got added six months ago um, from my games. Maybe a year ago, I don't remember. But yeah, this is one of the newer... This is something from Puzzles V2. After we rolled it out, I think this got added. Um, so yeah, this is pretty cool. So we can see, immortalized for all time, my game that I lost to Josh in this drawn endgame because I put my king on the wrong square. Uh, and I think on the live stream, Josh had commented like he was considering offering a draw or something too. Um, because, yeah, materials even. I don't remember. But, yeah, I made the wrong move and deserved to lose because of that. And I did lose. Let's check out one more of these. So here, I played this rook move, which can be refuted by, I think, white just checkmating me in one, right? Or two. Boom. Bang. So, yeah. Our 2200 rated opponent could have found this. Did they find it? I hope so. No, they missed it. Uh, they missed it again. And again, oh god. Wait, and then I tried to defend against the mate, which induces a different checkmate. Wait, no, it doesn't. No. H6 just gives up a winning possibility. So they missed a mate in one, and now we have rook f1, which removes the king from the defense of the square, and then we can promote. And the promotion covers the square anyway. So anyway, yeah, puzzles are fun. Do puzzles. Learn stuff. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've played thousands of games in many different tournaments and different time controls. I don't know if the time control makes it more likely or less likely that your game gets indexed in the puzzles. Somebody can do that kind of analysis, I guess. Um, but yeah, practice puzzles, learn from it. Um, uh, also, I know eventually we're going to work to build up more videos in the video library. So puzzles aren't the only way to learn. You could also look at like broadcasts of events of games around the world. Um, you could also just watch live streamers like myself here. Uh, Leech TV routinely has master and grandmaster games which is amazing um i found a plugin i uh, sorry user script to show the player flags next to the ratings um it's not using a stable well, i forget if it's using a stable api or not but there's some other issue with it but yeah uh anyway yeah enjoy puzzles enjoy videos enjoy chess in general or if you get burned out on it, there's other board games too. Yeah. So I hope we enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.